It is not a new problem, but it is one that deserves renewed attention. Prescription drug abuse is an epidemic in Pennsylvania, leaving lawmakers and law enforcement looking for ways to crack down on pill popping and prescription trafficking. And as it turns out, you are helping them to stay one step ahead of the problem. The number of drug overdose deaths in Pennsylvania increased by 89% since 1999. And statistics show most people's addiction to pills begins right here in their own medicine cabinet. Uh, we lock up our guns because we know they're dangerous, but yet you can go in any medicine cabinet in any home and find prescription medication. Some of them are going to hit the streets. Some of them are going to hit the streets. Um, you know, the people are going to be selling them, trying to make money off of that. Uh, you know, the addiction is going to be, you know, worse than it already is. That addiction to pills, mainly narcotic painkillers, is also leading to an alarming connection to crime. Powerful painkillers in your home can make you a target. Um, that's a primary motivator for burglaries. That people know that somebody has a, a medication, um, maybe a medication that's in demand, like Oxycontin, Percocet, things like that. Um, yeah, if people find out that, that somebody has that in their home, they're they're becoming a target, and those have a street value. I mean, um, you know, whether it be from ten, twenty, thirty dollars a pill, um, some even more than that. You can relate back almost eighty percent of the time when you have a home invasion, um, a perch snatching, a car theft, that they are looking or they already have the information that the person has medications in the home. 52% of people over the age of 12 have popped pills. More than half of those addicted were freely given the medication from a friend or relative. Painkillers are the most abused. What's more, in a survey, teenagers said prescription pills are their drug of choice because they're easy to get at home. They believe it's not illegal and that pills are safer than illegal drugs. Those kids couldn't be more wrong. Honey, our prescription pills in our prescription trafficking, I guess you can say, or abuse, is hand in hand with heroin. They go hand in hand with heroin. We know when, when there's a lot of pills on the street, there's less heroin. When there's you know, less pills on the street, there's more heroin. So they will be linked together forever. Early indicators show that a simple statewide program appears to be keeping some of those pills out of the wrong hands. Drug drop-off boxes like this one, scattered about the area, end up full week after week with unused medication. Fentanyl, uh, hydrocodons, uh, some Percocets, Oxycontin, of course. Uh, sort of what you read about is people selling on the streets. We're actually seeing in these boxes. Police and prosecutors tell us it is one of the cheapest and most effective ways to get drugs off the streets. You're taking the burden, you're taking that temptation away from you know somebody in your house. The drug boxes are located in a safe place, usually a police department. They're secure and virtually tamper-proof, and the unwanted medication is destroyed in an environmentally friendly way. These prescriptions are not polluting our water. They are instead incinerated. And no matter the county, I'm told people are dropping hundreds and hundreds of pounds of pills into these boxes. I know from what we see and the, the amount of medication that is not being consumed that somebody's overprescribing. Pennsylvania prosecutors are watching pending legislation that would create a prescription drug monitoring program and database that could alert to practices of overprescribing by physicians or what's called doctor shopping by addicts. There's, you know, debate over both sides. Are we inv invading someone's privacy with regard to their medical conditions and their health? Uh, are we stepping on the toes of the medical community? That's certainly monitored and uh, policed by their own organization. But these drug drop-off boxes may also bolster legislative change. Here's how. Counties must supply a quarterly report of the weight of what's recovered from each box. At the end of the year, those hard statistics will be scrutinized in Harrisburg. What I think the statistics will do, will it, it will give, give us the information to say, look, wh why are we throwing all of this away? If this was medically necessary at the time, why isn't it, be, why isn't it being consumed by the patient? To support the premise that the medical community needs to reconsider 
how much prescription meds they're dispensing. Here's the deal. You can only drop pills into these boxes. No syringes, liquids, insulin pens. And if you can remove the pills from their packaging, like these bottles or tablet packs, that will save a ton of time and space in these boxes. In fact, just dump your leftover pills into a Ziploc bag like this for the best results. If you'd like to find a drug drop-off box close to you, we've got a link on our website. Just go to WJACTV.com and click on the Scene on 6 tab.